Hi everyone, in this short video, I'm just going to show you how to create rain using Blender's particle system. So let's get straight into it. I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything. So A, A, X, delete. Now I'm going to add a plane. So Shift A, Mesh Plane. And this is going to be used as the basis for creating our rain. So I'm going to scale it up pretty high because this is where the rain is going to be emitting from. And then grab Z and put it pretty high close to where this, the sky would be, around there. And perhaps we might add a camera as well. So Shift A, uh, camera, and then let's face it around here. So we, we don't want to see the plane. We want, we want the plane to be out of sight a little bit. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And while I have the chance to remember it now, I'm just going to go ahead and change from Blender Render to Cycle Render. Okay, so now let's actually create rain. The rain part is actually easy. You just select your plane, Go into the particle tab of the property window and then hit new and that's it and i press Control a we can see rain and i can pretty much go into the settings and change something here to make it look better but i'm actually quite happy with that result uh, one thing i might change is perhaps um add a bit of random velocity because i don't want them all to fall at the same speed so let's just add a bit of randomness to that velocity so about 0.3 so some, so some particles will, will shoot down while others uh, will come slowly. So that tends to be a bit more realistic. All right, so I'm happy with that. So next one I want to do is I'm, I'm just going to create a boring background. So this is create a, a bluish or maybe, or maybe a slight whitish texture. So a slight whitish bluish texture. So sort of to represent a, a clear blue sky day, just like that. Pretty boring, but nevertheless. And uh, let's just move the particles over here. And I'm probably going to move the camera in a little bit. Okay. So we have the particle system pretty much set up. All we have to do now is actually create the rain. And as we mentioned in the previous video, these don't actually represent rain. These are, these are just data points. Because if I just press F12, you don't see the actual particles. They're invisible. Because we need to define what those particles are ourselves. So to do so, we're going to go ahead and actually model the droplets ourselves. So I'm just going to go into a different layer so that we don't get distracted by all that other stuff. And this will create a very quick little droplet. So Shift A, Mesh. Uh, I might use a Icosphere. The main reason is because it uses much less uh, polygons than a UV sphere. So I'm just trying to save memories here. The default should be fine. I'm just going to keep it like that. Um, and this is what I'm going to do is I'm just going to model it to make it look like uh, rain droplets. Just a cliche rain droplet. So either I can go into edit mode, select a point there. Uh, I can enable something called proportional editing. I can either select the vertices and one by one make it look like uh, rain, uh, rain droplets, but that's going to take a lot of time. So one thing I can actually do is I can actually select one uh, vertice like that and try to move a couple vertices at the same time. So to do so, I can enable something in Blender called proportional editing. So uh, if I enable that as such, when I press the G button, you can see a circle that's suddenly around it. So this is the, the, the circle of influence. So all vertices in this circle of influence will be affected when I move my uh, main vertice, the selected vertice. So this, when I scroll up and down, I can control that fall off. Of that movement so this allows me to to quickly model droplets very very easily and within a few seconds i have my first droplet so i'm just going to rename this to say droplet one and then shift d to duplicate and let's just do that again let's make it a little bit different droplet two um, or and so on and so forth. The third method of modeling this is, well, using the sculpting mode. So Shift D, let's go into sculpting mode. And I'm just gonna use the grab brush for this. Uh, F to make it a bit bigger. And, oops. And let's just uh, make it look a bit like proper droplet, like such. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create a few of these.
I have five droplets there. I'm, I'm now going to go ahead and put all of this in a group. You can sort of imagine as in like when you use Microsoft um, PowerPoint or something, when you select multiple images and then group them, they all become one object. It's sort of like that, except, well, I mean, if you move one object, the rest aren't going to follow you. That This is not parenting. This is just grouping. So uh, to do so, just you know, box select them or use any selection tool that you like and make sure they're all selected. So once all your droplets are selected, all you have to do is press Control G. That will immediately put them into a group and you can tell when it's highlighted green. And we need to give our group a name. So over here on the left hand side of the toolbar panel, if you don't see it, press N. Uh, just uh, name your group. So I'm, I'm going to name it droplets. So this is a group of droplets. So now when I select any one of them, I can confirm by going to the object panel of the properties window and seeing it under groups. So all of these are under the droplets group. Okay, so now let's go back to our first layer. I don't need to see the second layer, it's not important. And um, I can select my plane. I can then go into the particles tab. And now I can finally define what these uh, points will be. So we want, we don't want it to be an object. I mean, we could do that. We can add an object and make it droplet one. These will convert everything to droplet one. But we have uh, four or five droplets. We have variations of droplets. So we need to use the group that we created called droplets. So now it uses a variation of different different droplets. And we can see over here, we have variations of droplets. So now when we look at that rendered, we can see those droplets taking effect. It looks tiny, just barely visible. Actually, I might turn the background to be quite dark, like a stormy, gloomy day. And it might be more visible in that way. I might make the size of those particles a bit bigger. So in the physics panel, so in the, in the physics section, I'm just going to increase the size a bit. I'm just going to go ahead and create more raindrops. So just in the emission part, just bump it up to say 3000. So when I play it back, and now when I hit render, we can see we have a lot of rain going on. So we've created rain relatively easily. Now that's not a proper rain texture. I mean, we can go into the droplets panel. We can go into the droplets layer again and actually create proper textures for our rain. So we can actually select a droplet and add proper shaders for it. So in the uh, material tab, press new. I'm just going to use a glass shader and just keep it at the default glass shaders as such. Uh, and I'm just going to name this um, droplet. I'm going to go ahead and add um, the same uh, shader to all the other objects. So right click, shift, right click, shift, right click, shift, right click. Finally, shift, right click the one that you want to copy to. Control L so that that will link. Uh, and we want to say materials. So all these objects will now have the same shader as the one that you just defined. So when I go into this layer now, and then zero to go into the camera view, and then hit render, we can see proper rain droplets. If you want to make it look like how you see in those movies with all that motion blur thing going on, uh, you can enable motion blur. Just keep in mind that um, using motion blur will tend to use up your CPU's resources a bit more and will tend to make your render times a bit longer as well. So to enable motion blur, all you have to do is go to the render tab of the properties panel and uh, check motion blur. All right, uh, don't have to worry too much about that. Now when I hit render, we have rain that looks like rain. So when you actually go ahead and animate this frame by frame, it should actually look like rain. So it's a very, very basic tutorial, but that's basically how you create rain in Blender using Blender's particle system. So hopefully you can see how powerful Blender's particle system can actually be in creating cool looking effects for your 3D scenes. So as you continue to work with the particle system in Blender, it starts to become easy and you'll probably develop your own cool looking effects without relying on any tutorials or anything like that. So um, I hope this video has been useful to you and that you'll learn something new. Um, keep blending and I hope to see you in the next video.